Welcome back. We are here for the Between Stars and Suns, Season 2, Episode 15. Uh, we unfortunately will be missing our uh, player for Sir Atticus tonight, so um, hopefully we will see Mike next session. But uh, for right now, let's do a previously on. So whatever you guys remember from last time, a lot happened, but I mean, like, you know, what sticks out in your mind is... is from from last episode. Oh no! Well, we had the King and Shadows introduced. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> My yeah. goodness. Even even a mere mention of his name. Um. Yeah. No. Uh, calamities uh, across the board ensued. Um. There were some vulnerable scenes. I'm trying to remember what Liat did for hers. Uh. I think it was, oh yeah, she had a salon uh, and invited uh, Sir Atticus to join the salon that was full of uh, kind of like working class folk. Um, and uh, it was surprisingly civil, uh, even genteel. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, uh, it was a good old time. Uh, we got, went to, uh, went to try and meet up with uh one of our murder victims, uh, his, uh, his wife or ex-wife, still not sure where they stand on that. But uh, while she was waiting for her uh, to arrive at this cafe, uh, Liat was ambushed by a sword-wielding assassin. Um, in the middle of that, however, uh, something peculiar happened. Uh, we called Cut, uh, and... Uh, the actress playing Liat was very upset uh, because the actor playing Abdurrahman uh, flubbed his, uh, his, you know, fl uh, flubbed his essentially his death scene, um, causing a bit of a hubbub. Um, but uh, the professionals that they are, uh, they shortly went back to work, went back to set, uh, and from there uh, we also learned about uh, some more of Liat's history, uh, in particular the the sculptor or the the. Uh, the manager of the sculpturing uh, guild, I guess you could call him, or who created the statue of the masterwork. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that was about it. Well, Dr. Weiss finally met Ernest for the first time. Uh, they shared a, br a brief conversation, and then I let it slip that, oh yeah, Dame Georgie is probably dead, and like I'm um, just it, it was just like very cavalier about that. Uh, we did go to uh, the Bethlehem Royal Hospital uh, uh, to investigate uh, these sort of victims of the this very strange play. And we met a doctor, but I do recall that the doctor we met also showed up elsewhere with Sir Atticus, and they're going to have a fight. Uh, so we don't know which one is the real one, and I'm nervous about that because that's where we cut. Yeah, I mean, Ernest, in our interactions with the doctor at Bedlam, we, Ernest had whispered aside, you need to tell Dr. Weiss, everything you know about this patient. And then we went into the room with this doctor and saw a man afflicted with both the comedy and tragedy kind of expressions, plasticine all over his face. And it was a super spooky cut. And I'm also worried about that. <laughs> Yes, and the person that you saw <clears throat> with that sock and buskin face was actually Larkin Creel, but uh, kind of to you right now unrecognizable. But although, I mean, like, you know, um, we can continue on from there for day phase, because yes, we are continuing on with day phase, or we can have you all convene back at the house or, or elsewhere, um, sitting on your various issues because i'm going to say that if we continue on from where we where we last left off then i'm going to say that um 
Liat is either going to be facing some criminal charges or being surrounded by her um, uh, fawning worshippers. And then the good Dr. Weiss and Ernest are either still at Bedlam dealing with the to be or not to be doctor and Larkin Creel um, as he is right now, or you are, well, elsewhere investigating in King of Shadows. So yeah, where would you like to be? Where would you like to start your rest of your day? For the sake of expediency, but also because we as players know that there were two doctors, but our characters do not. I would love to start elsewhere and have that be a complication for the future. Thoughts, anyone? Yeah, that's that sounds good. Uh, did we get any clues from the, the King and Shadows or no? I don't think so. We don't have any yet, no. Okay. No, no. Oh, we didn't. We didn't roll good enough. I don't yeah, think we, so. We, we, I think we rolled pretty bad last time. Okay. Yeah, and you can't, you didn't you didn't put any maths on or anything, so therefore, uh, that's fair. Clues, so yeah, I, I I'm I'm just happy as a clam to like see this weird monstrosity. Uh, I will. I think I will leave the good doctor with my card, of, of like, and it and it just gives. I think. I haven't updated my cards yet, that which is unfortunate because it gives us an, to another address in London. So, I believe that we do know of a previous location that play was performed at. That is correct. Yeah, I re I really want to go there. Yes, the <clears throat> the play was previously performed at Ranlake Chapel. Um, yeah, which is currently under renovations. God knows mm -hmm. what they did to it the last time that uh, King of Shadows was there. But uh, is that where you want to go? Yes. Okay. So Weiss is going to Ranley. What about you, Ernest? Are you going to stay to talk to your friend? or? Uh... It's a very good a... question. Yeah. I wouldn't say friend. I mean... A colleague, right. reviewer. I mean, he Critic. occasionally had some very, very silly ideas on my genius, but you know. A anyway, uh, out of character, I think that either I'd be talking to him or trying to figure out through a series of actors that I know and other people in the industry where the next production might be that I might find other people connected to um, the performances that haven't started to show this severe of symptoms yet, if that makes sense. Right. Um, <clears throat> then I want to know who Hypatia is, because I don't recall. She is a side character on this threat that I don't, I don't actually I don't think remember. we met her yet. We just know okay. that she, we just know that she was interred, uh, like not interred. Uh, she was checked into Bedlam with uh, with Larkin. Yes, because she suffered from the same, <clears throat> you know, high delusional state that he did. But he's more, he's further gone because of his his uh, facial changes. Um, then in yeah. that case, uh, Ernest would try and talk some sense. Um, to the reviewer, but then perhaps retreat to another room with this doctor to see Hypatia after the fact. So continuing investigating at Bedlam, I think, is where Ernest is going to be. Okay. And I think that you will come upon a Hypatia, like when you when you do come out with um, Dr. Walters. Okay. Um, and then Liat. Are you going to remain at the cafe, or did you want to go? Yeah, I mean... Uh... So uh, Liat's thinking is that was too pulled actually. Um, a the the wife presumably didn't know that uh, there was you know an assassin that was going to shake up the joint, uh, and is therefore probably still on the way. Um, if she is still on the way, there is a suspicion that this woman knows about these assassins and has maybe put a hit out on Liat. And so if that's the case, uh, she needs to deal with her accordingly. So she's going to wait around for uh, 
for uh, Vardan, Vardana's ex-wife and uh, see what happens from there. Sure. Okay, great. Mm -mm 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 -mm. All right. Oh, God. So many decisions. I don't know where to start first. Okay. Because um, it's all good. Uh, let's start with Ernest. So, Ernest, you're still at Bedlam and yeah, probably uh, Larkin's appearance has creeped you out sufficiently enough because even though you recognize his voice possibly, um, you've heard those strident tones bitch and complain about possibly your work, but then every so often we'll complain about somebody else's. So yes, you know exactly how he speaks. It still comes through, through this, this, what you consider a mask, but it is his actual face. Um, he will invite you to touch it if you mind. Um, but if you're sufficiently creeped out, yes, you can leave with the, with Dr. Walters. Ernest has been unsettled by a number of things recently, and this is just another part of his previous life that has turned grotesque and sour. And so I don't think that he would stick around to revel in it. That said, on the way out the door, I think that Ernest really would have a moment's pause for this person that once had such a cutting wit that a passing aside about the awkwardness of blocking in a play turned so acrid that the entire town was talking about it for months on end like he just is trying to inspire just a little bit of that spark and might quote half of a bad review that he once gave Ernest the um violence and pedagogy and and throwing all these words out in such almost emulating his own strident tone of voice to see if there was anything left of the man that I knew underneath this mask. I think you'll see in his, in his eye sockets, you'll see like the, like the glimmer of familiarity and like, as if he's like, <gasps> but then as he's looking like he's going to, to, to speak as Larkin would, he's saying, unspeakable will unknowable knowledge reaching out for you calling out for you would that I would return to that cold void but the void has rejected me and now I am truly alone down below down below but you, you can still return. You can visit that void too, if you so choose. And I think as he's saying this, like he's getting closer and closer to you and you can start seeing the spittle on this face that you originally thought was a mask. And he's reaching out for you, Ernest. What do you do? Recede. I think with every step closer, Ernest takes a half step back until he, with the doctor over his shoulder, is closing the door. Yeah. And you can see him pressing his face against the window and like kind of like following you with his eyes as best as he can. Um, and I think okay. as you both make it out into the hallway, I think um, like you hear something like a like a wispy, a wispy tone, like a wispy song heard down the hallway. Um, and approaching you is this woman with wild hair. And somehow she has little tiny flowers woven into her wild, unkempt hair. She looks clean. She just has like calloused hands and an angular bird-like nose and she's kind of he loves me he loves me not he loves me he loves me not 
and then she, when she does that, she will look up and say, Oh, are you sure that we're awake? Oh, I've not been sure of my own waking dreams for years, my dear. Like Ophelia, herself so wry, so fair. How tragic you should be there. And and um, Ernest will, will uh, to craft a body in which to appraisingly circle her with his arms and, and kind of uh, walk in a circle around her. She will follow you, actually. Like, you know, she'll turn as you as you walk around her and, like, kind of, like, you know, be, you know, like, almost like your, your mirror image doing what you do and uh, just kind of look at you appraisingly and say, I've painted Ophelia. I know this is what, what she's like. <sighs> Questioning reality. Questioning worth. <laughs> I am convinced that nothing is real. Hmm. That we still sleep. Are you a dream within a dream? Are you my mirror? Here in this reality illuminated. Out to sleep. And perhaps to dream of you, fair lady. I might be asleep now to behold such bewitching, otherworldly Ken. And, and Ernest will reach out and, and attempt to touch her face. She will almost make like she's going to reach out and touch you. But then she's going to kind of like do this this kind of uh like hand dance like you know she'll kind of keep the connection to your hand but then kind of like wrap her hand around yours and then pull you in closer as she whispers into the where she um, believes your ears are um reality is the illuminated set of a stage but that is not real artifice of shadowed wings the backstage that erects the backdrops and lights the lights I know so much now and yet so little you would be good enough to paint if they'd let me And I would sit for you for hours if you would only describe your dreams to me while you worked at the brushes. And I would like to try some sort of information move Absolutely. to see if this lovely lady will tell me all about the stage in which she dreamed. Okay, go for it. Presence? Yeah, because you're talking to her, sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is a 10 plus whatever my presence is. Ooh. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, been a minute. New character who dis. <laughs> uh, my presence is a plus two. That is a 12. Ah! More it. master minds, please. Okay. Master mind. She's. She still has you close because she's pulled you in. And I think she will say, it's where I've dreamt of being in a mirror, painting and living my life and living my life in the mirror and then living my life in that mirror and back and forth still deep within and continued and as she's describing this dream to you of like repeating images and repeating loop I guess of her life 
you notice that she starts to lift up her sleeve involuntarily, like she's not even realizing she's doing it. And then scrawled on her skin in shaky handwriting is life imitates art, imitates life, imitates art, imitates, and just keeps going up her sleeve into her sleeve. So that is the repeating phrase. I think Ernest will uh, somewhat forwardly circle a gloved hand around her wrist and, and slide her sleeve down. Where is your room, dear? I will sit for a painting. Oh, I don't, I don't think they're going to, to let me paint. The last time I painted, I painted what was in my dream. The last time I painted it, they wouldn't let me paint anymore because it was too disturbing. I painted, and I'll put this in as a clue for the mastermind, I painted a bleeding heart amaranth feeding on cardiac muscle. Not just a simple heart, no like the lines and the veins and it made it look like it was pulsing and beating and you can start to see a slight froth at the edges of her lips as she says this that is your mastermind clue with that Ernest will like tap the back of her hand and look over his shoulder to the doctor Walters I believe yes mm -hmm. um with some sort of knowing, even though he can't see the eyeball movements, I had imagined the body languages. And is it time for her meds? Right. <laughs> and think that that's where we're going to cut over to um, Liat. Liat, over at the cafe, you are, well, I think. Tell me, how many worshipers do you think are actually here, if any? Um, I imagine it's small crowds, so maybe, you know, like 10. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me see. Uh, if you want to do this, I'm going to say that you should probably mark your, or excuse me, scar your reflection at least twice. Um, for what's the alternative? Basically, I'm going to have the cops come and drag you away to prison. For I mean, the, they can I certainly mean, try. Well, I'm just saying. I mean, we can complicate this as much as you want. Trust me, because I mean, it's basically like you killed a dude, regardless because of the self defense part. But I mean, like you know, there, there, there's a body at your feet and such, and let the cops can, come. Okay, alrighty. So, I think what we will find is that, yes, someone has called for the bobbies and the uh, constables are there, and D.I. Pettigrew has come upon the scene, said, ah, arrest her! And then he just looks at you and says, oh, it's you. Yes, it is, my dear Pettigrew. And I would like to make him a follower. Ooh, nice. Ooh. Okay. All right. So, yes, scar your reflection, please, for that. Too. And uh, tell us how he subtly or not so subtly debases himself. Uh, I think that, like, he says, oh, it's you, thinking that... Um, you know, think, I think that there's a, a like. I think there's a, a different kind of tone when he says that, and when he gazes upon her, he realizes that you know this is her. I am she, and so uh, she obviously is very cross right now. You know, she's had to deal with assassins. She's uh, you know they 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 oversteeped her tea. You know, it's just it's just a bad day. <laughs> oh God, yes, okay. Um, 
What does he do? I think that I think that she's gonna have him. <sighs> Pettigrew, you're useless as an inspector. Perhaps you'd be better as a barista. Fetch me a coffee. And uh yeah, so she's gonna have him make a coffee, but uh he's gonna have to grind the beans by hand. I uh, I still have to put some of my constables on this. I hear excuses. I want to be drinking yes. results. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And uh he scurries off behind the, the uh the bar too. Put on a bloody apron. You look like a mess. Not at all, mistress. Details. Absolutely. The details. And uh, he will prod the person that's behind the... You know, work in the coffee machine and that's like, how do I use this bloody thing? And, uh, yeah. Get to grinding. Uh, yeah. And I think at this point, it's like, I think the, the his constables are like looking aghast and, and kind of like scratching their heads and taking stock and, uh, one enterprising young lad is going to just order the others about and say, all right, lads, let's take the body away. Uh, let's have to wrap it up and do uh, our investigations elsewhere. Yes. Just and a moment, uh, if you don't mind. And uh, I would like to do like a quick search of the body uh, as an investigation move before they carry it out. Absolutely. Reason twitch apart the, the, the sheet, the tarp, whatever, and then you can uh, loot. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Um, I am looting this body if I can. All right. Go for it. See what you get. Uh, all right. I'm going to roll. You said reason? Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> Again. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Uh, that's a three. Oh, my God. Stop using that dice roller or those physical dice. Oh I'm god. using a different dice roller than the one I, I used last time. Oh god. Um, <sighs> yeah. I, uh... Yeah, okay. Actually... Uh, don't want to mark I'm just I'll trying to mask. figure... Okay. Yeah. The only reason I was like trying to figure this out because I was like, oh no, how do I make this worse? Uh, okay. Three turned into a seven to nine. Well, which uh, mask are you going to use? A mask of the past. Okay. Yay. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to let you guys <laughs> to finish up the mask of the mirror. God damn it. We'll do that for dusk phase. All right. Um, I still have it down here. Okay. Seven to nine. You do get a clue. Let me see what you have so far. I think in, as you're doing the searching, and you know about secret pockets in your long life, and so I think in a very small secret pocket, you find a tiny portrait of Vardana and an unknown man. Not this man, but someone unknown. unknown someone to unknown me. to me? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's quite small, but yeah, you do recognize the features of Ardana in it. I think as she's looking it over, uh, the constables are getting the scene taken care of, taking the body away. Um, but without looking back to Pettigrew uh, and just sort of had, like looking at the portrait in the light, she just goes, uh, my mouth is getting cold, Pettigrew. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it looks like I did, did have it. I guess because it was labeled victim with another man. I apologize. Okay, so that was another clue. Give me another one. Give me a second. I'm going to give you another. Instead of the portrait, I apologize. You will find a chrysalis in this secret pocket mm -hmm. and it's unique what detail makes it different from just any old chrysalis that you'd find in nature um 
So it's kind of similar to those, uh, and I don't remember the, the, the species of butterfly they belong to, um, but the kind of like mirrored casing uh, that this, this one specific kind of butterfly creates. Um, but it's not just kind of like this reflective casing. It, it looks like it's sort of like stained glass. So it's got these sort of panels of red and blue and gold, and green. Nice. You can add uh, that little detail if you'd like. Hmm. Okay. But yeah, I mean, like, you know, they're, they're clearing the body out after you take a look at it and, and check it out. Um, they don't say anything about, well, actually, you know what? I bet you, like, would you say that you palmed the, the thing that you found or did, that you, they can see that you did it, but they're not going to say shit? I mean, they know better. Okay. Alrighty. Just making sure. <laughs> Alrighty. So, oh, and then also mention how your reflection gets scarred for making Pettigrew your one of your followers. Uh, well, speaking of grinding, uh, I think as he's he's grinding the beans, mm -hmm. um, we cut to the basement of the British Museum, and uh, we hear a similar grinding sound as they're trying to reposition the statue uh, in a more secure spot from, since it's been uh, rapidly uh, decaying uh, over the past couple of weeks. Um, but as they're sort of trying to maneuver it, um, it tips over to a point, not all the way, but it tips over leans just enough that the, the base of the skulls sort of crushes uh, the legs of one of the followers. Yeah, I think at this point, uh, Pettigrew has brought over what um, he's come up with. Grinding the beans, you know, proper temperature and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, presents it to you, this dark sludge um, on a small shot cup on a saucer. She looks at it. She puts the saucer... Uh, into her own hand and looks at the coffee. She smells it a bit. She even takes a bit of a sip. And I'm sure Pettigrew's expectantly waiting for her uh, response. And she sort of sl sloshes it in her mouth a bit, trying to pick up the notes. Hmm. No, this isn't quite right. But you should enjoy it nonetheless. It is your hard work after all. And uh, she tips the coffee onto the floor. Drink up. And with that, she sort of just does a flourish of her, like, uh, of her uh, shawl, not her shawl, um, her stole. And um, she'll make her exit. Okay. But before she leaves, uh, she does look back from the door to make sure that Pettigrew is licking up. I mean, he's very hesitant about it, but I mean, he mm -hmm. can see eyes on him and... You know your your weighty stare on him, and he, as if your stare is bringing him down, he goes down, and he actually starts to lick it up while watching you leave at the same time. Yep. Um, and I think as you as you exit this this cafe, I think you'll see Miss uh, Mrs. Vardana like you know walk up, and uh, she'll reach you with a oh it's you mm. I don't know what this is about I mean I deserve a part of that estate we have been married for all this time whatever yes, whatever that whatever that bastard who is is supposedly taking his home or living there i mean it's not my fault that he he sired someone else in the interim my dear these hysterics in public are quite unbecoming of a lady uh would you mind uh, perhaps taking tea with me at my own estate we can talk about the specifics of your property and uh, ownership thereof i would like that uh, this seems to be uh, a crowd near here and I just saw the constables um, and the carriages 
leaving. Hmm. It seems to be a, a rather rough place. Uh, yes, we shouldn't concern ourselves with it. It's rather, um, well, you can see there. And she sort of just gestures to Pettigrew licking on the floor. Oh. Is that what uh, things have come down to these days? Oh. London is a mess. Shall we? Yes. Um, so, uh, do you think that, that, that Abdurman has reconstituted himself by this no, point? No, I think, okay. I, guess, well, I think what I ended up rolling was pretty bad. So I think yeah. that he's, he's sort of like, he's cooking at the house, you know? Okay. Got it. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I mean, like, you know, you make your way either walking or like, you know, taking a carriage, however oh, yeah, you want well, to taking it. a carriage. I mean, my goodness. Use my feet. <laughs> Use your feet. Sure. Ah, no litters available. I apologize. Um. Yeah, and then we're going to head over to John Weiss. Um, Dr. Weiss, you have found out that uh, Branley Chapel was the, the last place that the King in Shadows was played. And, uh, yeah, that is... Hold on, let me get into the location. There we go. When you get there, it's under renovations. Lots of paint cans and scaffolding all about. Uh, tarps draped on uh, the numerous places where they're trying to do some work but not be necessarily uh, disturbed um, or disturbing people that are coming in and out. There's an outside din of passerbys able to be heard from inside and it uh, you were told that the performance, the last performance was held down in the basement which is dimly lit and contains only a shoddy wooden stage and a canvas backdrop. Paint the scene, and this is for everybody. This place has been touched by madness, but some elements of it almost seem too mundane. What are they? And you can go ahead and put this in the London tab if you'd like to keep the descriptions handy. Touched by madness, but some elements seem almost too mundane. What are they? It looks as if this entire sunken sort of basement was actually dug and then bricked in but the brick in the walls opposite the canvas backdrop are not masoned in the classical style and in fact look haphazardly in broken spirals built up into a solid structure from going down the stairs there's quite a bit of mud being tracked back and forth like it's a frequently used place but when you actually get down there and you're looking at these sort of spiraling patterns and whatnot you realize that the footprints continue up the wall uh it's less the structure and more sort of the I guess the, the housekeeping of it. Um, the floor is littered with all sorts of strange uh, evidence of the performance. Um, so iridescent golden feathers and coins and pieces of broken glass that are bloodied. Um, and uh, I think that among all this weird detritus, uh, there's just kind of a regular, very, very plain looking push broom. And a, and a little like metal dustpan uh, that some of it has been swept up into, but it's sort of this contrast between the mundane things used to to uh, to clean up whatever this kind of bizarre performance was. Indeed, and Doctor Weiss, you see all of this here. I think, uh, yeah, I mean. I think, again, flitting in and out are several different people that are around, and um, then uh, someone who has been giving directions intermittently to different people as she's been going up and down the stairs will come upon you and say, Oh, hello. Um, I'm Marie Litton, the, the manager here. Uh, is there anything I can do to help you? Uh, we are... 
of course, under construction, trying mm-hmm. to fix up the place from uh, what we had here last. Yes, uh, I'm Dr. Uh, John Weiss. I'm doing a little bit of a sort of a medical history of a couple of patients of mine. And I was let know that they were here last during this play. And I'm wondering what sorts of things happened to it. I'm wondering if like they've maybe have, maybe experienced an allergic reaction or some sort of other sort of foundational thing. And I'm and considering all this construction, did something break or what have you? Uh, no, it, it was the strangest thing. It, it, they had what seemed to be elaborate effects, but no discernible way that they could have been uh, practically done. And then when they left, it was as if they had cleared everything out and made... I, I can't even describe it. Uh, are, are you making repairs to things? Or did they take something away? I want to say they are, we are making repairs. But it's not something that you'd necessarily, um, something that you'd, you'd necessarily think needs to be repaired. I mean, the whole second act was just two people rowing an imaginary boat with imaginary oars down an imaginary river, occasionally punctuated by wailing from the chorus. I mean, Hamlet, mm-hmm. it was not. But for some reason, once everything was cleared out, it seemed like there was... The absence of order. Mm. I, we, we just needed to to paint, I guess, refresh, and just feel like we needed to build on top of whatever was left. Mm, okay. Um. Uh, this is, and I'm just sort of my main concern is investigating this person because, like, like. Sh- this seems like to be a little bit of a psychological obsession, and so we could have more victims on our hand. Are you experiencing the dreams too? Mm, it seems that as though there is a mass hysteria effect going across London. I have not considered what the exact cause of this yet. I'm considering biological, chemical, uh, sort of a maybe a multi-cost causation uh, pattern in which one psychology one sort of a domino effect you tip one over and it tips on the rest of the the dominoes next to it you do realize that sometimes art is more woeful than life yes we act or we perform to escape from our real lives and consume this uh, these plays or, or, or these performances as a way of escaping but for some reason this King in Shadows production seemed more bleak and everyone seemed to be coming out of it with uh, definitely not happiness I will say Mm-hmm. All right, and I think I I take out my notebook and just write on uh, addition like under like symptoms, depression on it. Um, so that's very interesting. Um, I mean, you're welcome to to come around and look. Just be careful of the scaffolding. I don't want anything to fall on you. But uh, yes, I mean, we're just trying to repair where we think things are broken. Yes. This is this is a very peculiar case indeed. And, and I'll I'm be just around. Gonna... I'll I'll be I'll be yeah. cleaning up over here with the push broom and and mm-hmm. the, the uh the mat. So if you need any help please let me know. So, so I'm 
so like I'm investigating sort of like what sort of areas are being repaired. Like, okay. is there any focus point at that? Okay. Uh, so. This would definitely be with reason. Mm -hmm. And if you have anything that you'd like to add to your um, role for advantage, that's fine. Uh, yeah, not really. Okay. I, I don't think a flesh terrarium would help in this case. <sighs> Most of my stuff is for non-investigation moves, honestly got it, speaking. Got it, got it. Sure. Okay. Yeah, it's probably... Yeah, my reason's good. Uh, that's an eight. Okay. Listen, my, my, one of my uh, Dawn questions is, did you submit some of the possibility of supernatural explanation despite everything you experienced. Oh, sure. <laughs> um, you'll have fun with this one, then. Give me a second. Alright, let's see if you can explain this away, then. I think as you are investigating, like, over by where the scaffolding is, in a clearer area that's over by, like, eye height, or, mm -hmm. you know, eye line, the light changes here. Almost as if someone is directing something on you to illuminate what you're looking at. But when you look behind you, you don't see where this light is coming from. And then you turn back to it. And then as you turn back to the wall that you're, invest that you're investigating, I think you hear... <laughs> bravo! Bravo! And then another says... They're not going to find anything if they look over there. Why are you cheating? And others just like, you know, keep that are that are continuing to applaud you. And you hear this from above you and all around you. Mm. And then you hear. Oh, fine. Let's give them a little help. And then the applause continues. And as the applause continues, you start feeling something drop on you and then another thing drop on you and then another and then another until you are deluged with a bunch of what look like handwritten notes <laughs> seemingly out of nowhere so they haven't cleaned everything up yet up yet Okay. When you when you when the the, delu the deluge stops, you will notice that they form a perfect circle of folded notes around you. Do you open oh. them? Yes. I'm very curious. The notes say notes in varying forms will talk about a fragrant void. Written by someone called Atticus Waitley. I have no idea who that is. Right. But they all say some variant of the same thing. By this person. About the fragrant void. That is your clue. Huh. Neat. Ooh, this... Fragrant void. Wonder if that's a code word for some sort of mushroom. Maybe. Still, it's an important clue. Not and sure. I and I and I just take like a handful of like these notes and pocket them. And uh, Marie hurries over, seeing you do this, and say. Where did those come from? I... There was nothing on that scaffolding. The workmen had had, had lunch up there. They, they took everything down. Would have been above the scaffolding? Or... Come, come. And then she she asks you to, to, to take a look. There's nothing above the scaffolding except mm. the ceiling. Well, there's the ceiling. It, it could have been attached to the ceiling. 
I think we would have noticed this much paper attached to the ceiling. You'd be surprised what people can miss. Uh, do you, uh, hmm. Perhaps I should not share uh, that this anecdote, but... Uh, I, hmm. Do you need me to collect those and put them in the bin? Oh, I've collected some of them. You can collect the rest if you want, or just leave them there. I don't think like anyone would mind, really, since you're busy with all construction work. Well, it's best to at least clear the space off for the uh, construction workers. Mm -hmm. I will bring the bin over, and then I will dispose of them there. Um, yes, please continue on if, you, if you'd like, but again, be careful. Uh, at least it was just paper and not something heavier. Absolutely. Oh. And that is where we're going to close out of that particular scene. So we're going to go ahead and take a five minute break. Um, and so be back in five. So we're going to retro it and come back to the scene with Dr. Weiss because I owe Dr. Weiss a complication. But first, um, yeah, so Marie has come over and uh, been concerned about the notes and will, like, you know, argue with you a little bit, Dr. Yeah, Weiss, oh, about... No, no, no. Like, people can go literal weeks without discovering a body when it's literally in a person's own living room just because of a blanket just got tossed over them. And in fact, when the blanket starts to rot, is only when they actually noticed at all. It, not even the smell, because of, of just the sort of perfumes and candles like this person loved to collect. Just happened to uh, cover up the smell. Like, it, you'd be surprised about, like, about what can, uh, about how unobservant people are. Did they notice the Body's decay? I mean... It, it, only when it rotted through the blanket. Oh dear. Well, as you can see, there's nothing on that that scaffolding, and the top is away, and again, the workmen were just up there and had taken all their, their belongings away. No one would have left this many notes. I mean, this is, this is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, you'd be surprised about how eccentric uh, people of London are. Where are you looking right now, Dr. Wise? Are you still looking up on the scaffolding? Or are you, like, kind of actually paying attention to Marie as she, you know, shows you her disbelief? Uh, I'm paying attention to Marie, but, like, stuff can just go over his head. Because, like, he's just like, oh, we're, we're investigating now, and... Oh boy, I found a clue, and I wonder what this means. And oh yeah, I get to talk about uh, about my work, and he's just very happy. Yeah, I think that there's like some kind of like uh, dim shadows above where the scaffolding is, so that height and corner are not as well lit from below. And I think as you're talking, perhaps you're peripheral vision catches like something moving or slight movement and when you look back up on top of the scaffolding there is a figure there kind of crouched and you see what do you think that you see Dr. Weiss that makes you believe that it is Dame Georgie that is looking at you from the top of the scaffolding Dame Georgie has a particular way of looking at people, at people he doesn't like, at people that he does like, and as people that he could c care less about, but he has to care about them because, well, they're citizens of the Empire and he has to do his best to protect them. He's looking at me like the last time we saw each other when he said that my services as his doctor may not be any longer required. He, he looks at me as one would look at a delicious plate of food. 
So when you have humans that look at you like that, it's a it's a very distinct thing. I'm gonna say your condi- your complication, your condition is marked by Dame Georgie. Oh boy. I'm in danger. And we're not even in night phase yet. That's great. I love it. <sighs> and now, to be honest, I'm not sure what to do. I know what I would like to do, but everything that I would like to do needs to happen in the night phase. <laughs> so I don't know if you want to have, like, anything further in day phase where you can... I don't know, have vulnerable scenes, some breathing room, some some frank discussion about, I don't know, life, <laughs> life well, and the meaning of everything. I was planning on having that scene with uh, Vardana's wife. Okay. Um, we can totally do that, for sure. <laughs> but like if ever, if, but what I was about to say though is, is if Ernest and Dr. Vice don't have any scenes that they want to do, I'm totally fine, like, either making that my night phase thing or yeah i i think with with what just happened for me like i'm ready to go to night phase i think ernest is gonna have like we can just have a narrative space in which he wanders the streets or or has like i i feel like there's more investigation to be done okay because i'm still stuck in bedlam and i'd like to get out of that before okay. um night phase because i don't really want to be in bedlam for night phase <laughs> sure I, I do not blame you one damn bit i mean cool you know. cool, 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 cool cool i don't know <laughs> what that scene is yet but uh if Leah would like to start and then we can uh echo back i'll tie my mirror into it and we'll go from there yeah how about we do how about we do that because we can even okay. have like a, a drifting day into dusk phase for true dusk phase so yeah um Liat, do you do you do you know what you'd like to to do? Or like you want to go directly to Hargrave House? Yeah, we're going, going to the Hargrave House, uh, to my estate, uh, Hargrave House, and uh, uh, unfortunately, I think Abdurrahman is still cooking, um, so we'll let him let him simmer for a bit. Uh, but I think when we get in, uh, you know, she's not a completely incapable woman. You know, she. Uh, so I think that when she gets in, uh, she will say though, uh, I do apologize. Uh, my, my man is, well, he's indisposed at the moment. Uh, if you don't mind helping yourself, there is a bar in the salon. Ah, oh, is this how you, you start tea with, with liqueur and drink first? I suppose. He is really just more of a framing device, really. I don't really care what beverage you partake in, as long as you're enjoying yourself and willing to discuss certain matters. Of course. The matter that that house belongs to me as Vardana's wife, not that person who's been posing as such. But uh, certainly... And if there's a cart there, you know, for whatever, then she's just going to go to the darkest, deepest drink that's sitting in a crystal decanter and then just kind of like pour, pour one, pour one for herself. Um, did you want some of this? No, but uh, do make yourself comfortable. I must say, though, that I've ever since meeting you, I've been... Running afoul of some very interesting people. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? I don't even know who you are. I mean, you could just as easily be one of the swains of that... that person that was in my husband's flat. Uh, he had interests, I'm sure. Which is why I think that that person was actually uh, someone born on the other side of the blanket, I suppose. Uh, is, that a, is that some sort of saying or euphemism? I'm not familiar with it. Uh, my husband was not an innocent by any means. Our marriage was arranged, 
and we seemed to get along fine. But then he decided to leave. He just up in the middle of the night decided to make his own way and not say a thing about where he was going or what he was going to do or include me in his plans. For thirty years I'd been searching. I traced him here, only to find he has, I guess, a son who has taken on his name, which should have been for our children. Is that who you believe the victim is? It's Not your the husband. Way. It's the only explanation why he looks so much like my husband, as I remember him from so long ago. Oh, my dear. That's so unimaginative. What else could it be? That's what I intend to find out. But first, I must know, what else did you... What else do you remember about your husband before he left? Did he say anything, have anything, do anything? Perhaps out of the ordinary. And I'd like to do an investigation with that. Oh, absolutely. Sure. I mean, again, present since you're talking to her. Um... That is a... That is a 10. Nice. Conversation with Mrs. Vardana. Okay. Um, ten. Definitely not a problem. And she's going to... She's going to consider your question. Quite seriously, because what else is there to do? Um, and she's falling under the sway of whatever drink she ended up picking up. Um, on the cart. She will settle down, spread her, her skirts and just, you know, just kind of like lean back on this lounge or chaise that she's, that she's been sitting on drinking her drink and kind of recall, like she gets this uh, nostalgic look on her face and say, he was the most handsome. Of all the suitors, of all the ones presented as a possible match, we danced. I remember he moved so well and that he showed me his collection. He showed me where he lived and it was a wonderful estate back then. And he had this beautiful collection of art and artifacts from all different places, as if he was able to have, be well-traveled. But he said part of it was from his father, who also collected. And it was something of a personal quirk or a family tradition. There were so many old and beautiful things. And he collected other things as well. Living people. But I was going to turn a blind eye to that if he stayed. Because he was so charming and so, dare I say it, so beautiful. And I remember this one thing, and this is, this is one of the clues. This is the clue. I remember a particular Higa of gold that he had with emerald and sapphire gems. It was almost ethereal to look at. And he said it was much older than it actually looked. He had taken care of it so well, he said. If anything, that would be the one thing that I wanted to find. 
but vultures, hangers-ons for that person that had taken over his identity, probably lost it, or sold it, or something. I want control of that house and the things in it, if not to at least claim my property as his wedded wife, but also to find some memory I can hold on to of the man I thought I loved and married. And she takes a swig of the, uh, the drink. And this, this Jiga, you think it's been taken, or you think it might be among the artifacts in his home, his current home, or his, I guess, former home now? Where else would it be? Unless he said he would never, ever let any of these items go. They were... As he put it, he, they, he said that they were mementos of bygone ages that needed to be kept in private and for one's own enjoyment. I could see his fascination, almost bordering an obsession. It has to be there. Where else would it be? It is a mystery, isn't it? A mystery within a mystery within a mystery. What do you have to do with my husband? Or, were, again, were you one of his um, paramours? <laughs> Darling, no. He could only have been so lucky. He had that kind of confidence, too. <laughs> yes, well, he's dead now, isn't he? Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. I'm good down there. Okay. And, uh, yeah. So, um, we head back to Bedlam. And, uh, yeah, I think Ernest, Hypatia tells you all these things and lets you know by what she said and actually what's scrawled on her of the dreams that she had, like an, almost like a continuous loop of things that she was doing, but, I mean, she kept on seeing it and repeating <clears throat> repeating pattern in the mirror of her dream. What do you do now? I think at this point, Ernest is frightened of the fourth wall. Everything here seems staged and claustrophobic, and he's becoming paranoid of even the characters within characters of the people he like knowing hypatia is a person acting as a person should act and and is getting so high on the meta physical aspects of all of this i think that he needs to escape it but in his kind of delusional suspicions at this point will turn on the doctor and almost emulating the hyper tragedy of the expression on um i'm forgetting names uh leland's uh larkin. face larkin's face mm -hmm. are you part of the play as well doctor are you exactly who you claim to be and is trying to emulate a mesmerist that he met on a drunken lark like 
six months ago and is very concerned that everything's a play all of it's an act and is this doctor even who he says he is i want to give you something but you you got a 12 so i really can't (laughs) (laughs) um i could happily roll and fail like (laughs) we'll just do a different (laughs) <laughs> this would be like this would be like a ruin roll if this is trophy because it'd be like oh, understood you know then i then i think at this point the <laughs> doctor like however the doctor responds earnest acting as if all the world's a stage wanders out of bedlam looking quite the madman as he is rowing an imaginary boat down the road towards Hardrive House and then occasionally just swimming along. I think in this case let's let's do let's do a day move since this is kind of a risk to your mind at this point. <laughs> I'm leaning into that, to... but sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. It's like, you know, kinda of, let's see let's see like if you can keep it together. Uh what do you think will go wrong if you fail or lose your nerve? I think that Ernest will spend the rest of the night phase and perhaps ever, like, several days after that, um, quite delusional and wandering the streets of London, performing as if he is on stage. Go ahead and... Do you have anything that we need to worry about? So let's see. Give me a second. Oh, I'm defaced and vulnerable at the moment. Oh, God. Uh, disadvantage, sir. Yep. Uh, unless you got something. <laughs> Honestly, I'm doing this to myself. I just, I enjoy the play to lose ethos. Okay. We're doing the thing right now. But let me see if my items are... No, I don't think that my silk kimonos for every occasion are really going to do me any good here. So I am just going to roll at disadvantage, okay. having um, drunk too deeply of the King of Shadows and questioning my sanity. Mm. Okay. Okay. That's a fucking nine. Ooh. With disadvantage. All right, so you keep it together, yay. Um, but I'm gonna say, tell me how you're keeping it together while still immersing yourself in this play within a play within a play of reality. I admire the director. I am fully conscious of what is happening. But the storytelling is so immersive that I'm just having a good look around to to see if I can learn anything new. I feel like we're having we're in a, we're 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 like seeing the camera is panning into like one of those dance montages that happens in weird surreal movies. Yeah, the, the dance montage is happening. Um, Orphans climbing up the face of the buildings. <laughs> something i mean Uh like you know for for your your backup um your backup vocals or your 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 dance chorus in the background the wide camera shot yes there are too many streets of london in the background absolutely that's what you're after (laughs) yeah absolutely um oh my god just imagine like little rats in the gutter just sort of yes line dancing Right, Burning. right, right, <laughs> right. While, 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 like Ernest is do, is is living his best is his best musical life at the moment, um. And I think at the end of this montage, there's like gonna be somebody at the edge of the of the, of the finish, that kind of, you know, just timidly comes up to you and says, "It's like, you missed your blocking." Oh, it's that camera cut in which we see the wide shot 
we see the person reacting and we see Ernest with nothing but the same, like, like a dark camera filter behind him and no one <laughs> on the yeah. street. Exactly. Ooh. So, Ooh. but I'm going to say your condition is the best musical life. Yes. <laughs> All the world's a song. <laughs> oh, man. Just having like 500 days of summer, like images in my head. God. Ah. Okay. I told you that I hadn't gamed in a while and to be prepared. So here we are. Here we are. I no, changed I'm... the between into a musical. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, we need that musical episode. You know, if we could totally do it, I would. All right. It's fine. <laughs> Love chat. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> So did Dr. Weiss have, did want to indulge in the further scene or did we want to save that for night phase? Night phase, baby. All right. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, man, I love chat. Oh, yes. Uh, the bottle episode for sure. <clears throat> Ooh, it's going to be rough. Okay. Um, yeah, I think at this point we can easily like float into dusk to get get us ready for for night phase for next time, especially because um, Sir Atticus <laughs> has something he's got to get ready for at the dawn. So I want to include that. I want to I want to see that. Oh my god, it's gonna be a hot mess. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be awesome. All right, I have so much planned for 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 night phase. It's ridiculous. Um. Okay, so dusk phase. Let's move to dusk. Uh, any playbook moves that need to be resolved or custom moves resolved during this particular dusk phase? Remind me, especially in case if you have a, a custom move that that kicks off at this point. No? Uh, no. No, okay. but I can so, narrate my masks if you like. Yeah, please. I mean, like, we'll do that first. So before we get into anything else. Uh, so I'm just going to merge these two masks, or three masks at this point, I think. Hold on, let me just double check. You should only have Mask of Mirrors and Mask of the Past. Oh, okay, cool, great, awesome, fabulous. Um, so it, it's, it takes place, we cut back to that scene right after where uh, we find the, the sculptor, the artisan. We see him, he's holding himself, he's holding the arm at the, the wrist that's been severed, we see Liat using his severed hand to paint blood onto the skulls that serve as the base for her over-the-top statue. And as the sculptor watches, we can see his expression go from reverence to just absolute disgust. His illusion of her is this infatuation he's had with her is completely shattered and broken off if you will cut off um and he's just he's sober now he's he's no longer under her her spell under her whims and as he's carted away she looks at the hand Leon looks at the hand and then tosses it to another one of the acolytes who were in her entourage and uh she says, make me something nice out of that. And some time passes in between that. We find the we find the artisan alone in his studio again. Uh, all the other acolytes who helped him who helped him construct this piece are all gone. We just see this statue of Liat. Canaan and it has the hair, it has the owls, it has the claws, it has the base of skulls, but something that it has is uh, a crown, this very large opulent looking crown. And we see the sculptor, he's got, uh, he's got what looks to be like an empty wine skin, sort of like draining, suckling the last bits of wine out of it and he tosses it and he takes up a chisel and hammer and begins to drunkenly do his best to climb up the ladder. Uh, it, there's some issues, obviously, um, given his recent disability, but he's able to make it up there, even in his drunken state. And when he gets to the top platform, 
he just looks at the statue with disgust and disdain and he begins to walk over towards the face of the statue of of liat and he begins to chisel away at the mouth trying to break it trying to scar it trying to make it as ugly as she is on the inside but there's a moment where in his drunkenness he slips and he stumbles into a support that was holding the statue up and the statue begins to tip much in the same way it tipped earlier in the day it begins to lean and tip and it starts to crash through these supports these uh i don't know what you would call them uh not buttresses but you know these platforms that uh, the workmen have been using to to work on it because it's very tall um but it begins to collapse uh collapse into these things and uh the drunken sculptor does his best to try and climb down but he's too drunk and and he's far too old uh and as this thing goes falling to the ground the only reason it doesn't break entirely is because it not only falls onto the structure that was being used to support it but uh the crown that it had this very large ostentatious stone crown crumbles and cracks and breaks off of the head of the statue, leaving beneath it a dead sculpture. Thank you. Ernest, do you have your mask of mirrors? I can certainly do that. Um, I'm going to hitch it to the end of a very bloody production of the baker's son in which Ernest has given the final bow and some of his fellow actors are still struggling to recover from their wounds on the stage behind him. And the audience is quiet at first. And while he recalls this thunderous ovation, At the edge of <laughs> this musical number, he recalls the silence and just one single person clapping from a box above the theater. And as he looks up, he sees a man wearing a, a mask in the shape of a sun. And in that moment, Ernest feels seen as if a light shone down on him, just on him, in the spotlight in the center stage where he has always felt most at home. And from the balcony, he hears, I don't see much blood in performance these days, but truly remarkable, stunning. And I think it would be best if you could see and only see that you might be a great poet, but only if you remain unseen. And Ernest doesn't know it at the time. But as the audience stands on their feet and begin the thunderous applause, all they can see now is the blood still streaked on his invisible flesh and the stage clothes soaked in the fellow actor's blood and he bows again. Ah, mm. Well, okay. Okay. Let us look at what comes next. So we have paint the scene at Hargrave House. I think. <laughs> Considering the 
possible musical montage we had, I think we're going to look at the music room today. A former hunter in residence once used this room to wrangle a spirit using the power of music. There are still subtle signs of the struggle in this room. What are they? And don't forget, you can put your answers in rooms of Hargrave House. Signs of the struggle. What looks like texture in the wallpaper, you can actually see splits in which there are embedded strings still slightly curled and peeling out of the uh, damask. There's a, a music stand uh, as well as a piano and each of them have like uh, sheets of music on them. Um, but if you look closely in between the sheets, there are actual scrolls of, uh, of occult rituals um, sort of embedded in them that were used that night to uh, to intone or to uh, to invoke something to help uh, battle whatever spirit was in here. I think the piano is in the sort of corner of the room, but if you move your body in this correct angle, you can see scratch marks that form a staff in the ground as though the piano was just shoved to one side of the room. Okay, so, uh, well, did we want to look at anything to answer a question at this point? Yeah. Um, yeah, because then that'll <laughs> determine what happens in night phase besides other things, I'm sure. Yeah, but, I mean, uh... I would like to try and answer the first question for the collector. Okay. Um, uh, who knows more of the collector than they've let on? The follower will, bleh, the follower, follower will reveal the true nature of the collector to the hunters. So given that this is a complexity two, but you have eight clues to pick from, which clues do you want to use towards this good question <laughs> <laughs> um do you like the wife for it i do i'm just trying to figure out uh, a way to tie her in directly mm -hmm. um my initial idea was that the wife was wearing one of these butter sh butterfly shaped brooches mm. um And then I think that uh, to sort of tie it into the chrysalis uh, and the the giga, um, I think that the, the the same sort of gem colored uh, coloring on the the chrysalis uh, resembles the gems on the actual giga, the sort of emerald and sapphire. But uh, that's all I've got. Yeah, we would be rolling a plus one then. Yeah. Because it unlocks a later question. Yeah. How lucky do you feel? Well, that's the tricky thing is that it's not like a traditional threshold question. Like there's not an either or to it, as it seems. Uh, so I'm like, I'm wondering if we don't want to try and bring just at least one more clue to give us a little bit of the, the oomph. In that case then the wife also has heterochromatic eyes and the Ooh. collector happens to be drawn to a particular it collects a particular kind of like i think Ooh, that, that would, would be my pitch there. that would make sense too because if the giga has the emerald and sapphire and elodie has the blue and the green then and she knows more than she's saying she's tied into the history of it yeah i like that so are we saying Elodie or are we saying the wife? Both. Oh. They're working together. Nice. Yeah. Oh my. Okay. Okay. I like I'm it. I'm just like throwing it. Mads all kinds of shit today. That's what Oh I'm no. <laughs> I mean, this is great. I shit, I didn't even realize you guys wanted to roll with us too, so sure. Um You have anything to add, Kat? Girl. Uh not really, because I have not investigated this threat at all. <laughs> Kind of immersed yeah. in the, the whole, the whole like, you know, yeah. nothing's really going on with King and Shadows. It's really same. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 
oh wow, there's been a murder in London. Who would have thunk? And this seems personal. Um, I'm not getting involved because Liot is just Liot. And oh boy, there's lots of stuff going on with like the King of Shadows, the fixed pigs, like hmm. I've got my plate full. Alright, cool. Well, uh I guess I'll roll then. Uh plus two. 2d6 plus 2, okay. Mm. So much good vibes. Just That's a 12. Oh! Oh no. Oh, wow. Oh, um, oh <laughs> no. Life and LED, okay. That's, <laughs> that's it, isn't it? <laughs> it is fan-fucking-tastic! I'm sorry, I'm just enjoying myself right now. <laughs> sorry. The masterminds showing up. Oh yeah. She also has heterochromatic eyes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So this unlock. You are so correct. <laughs> and this unlocks the next question. Sorry. I just. I feel gleeful. I ne never thought I would use that word, but yeah. I did. <laughs> gleeful. Who is the collector? Resolve the threat by confronting and neutralizing collector did you figure out who it is and that's a that complexity six or that should be a complexity six let me just verify because I, I, I put this in advance but that doesn't necessarily mean it's like i'm correct complexity six yep all right well we've got four clues i'm i'm not feeling bold um, I feel like I need another <laughs> night phase for this but does anybody feel bold to ever to ever do a like a negative a negative number on their role for answer the question i mean honestly like i've had it one time uh-huh one group did it and they were just like we really really like it but this is it and i think they got it but oh um, okay well yeah i mean if they have conviction i mean like i think that's really cool but even if they miss and they still roll dared to roll on a negative i'm still like wow man that's hard <laughs> <laughs> do you do you two want to get more clues on Kingdom Shadows? Because because we, we do have a, uh, enough clues to answer the first one. But did you want to get more clues before you answered, or I really you... just don't have a good theory. Like I'd rather have two more clues to kind of have a rounder idea of what okay. the fuck is happening. Because I'm Makes literally sense. like off stage. <laughs> My what? Like. That's where Ernest is at right now. I don't have a strategy. Um, I do have a theory about where it's going to take Ooh. place next. Please. Ooh. Sure, go for um, it. Life imitates art. Art imitates life. That's photography. It's taking oh. place at the uh, 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 the camera... Uh, the camera Society Obscura? Obscura? Yeah, it's Society <laughs> Obscura. Because that's like Atticus Waitley is for was very involved with that. And I love that so much. I love it so much. Oh my God. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. We yeah. love it enough that we don't have to roll, right? Like it just happens. Oh, I would love that. Yeah, it's but just that, right? Probably should, yeah. Uh, do you want me to roll? I will send you good vibes. Okay. And the vibes were received. It is a 10. God Ooh. dang. Christine today. Thank Woof. you, fucking universe. Wow. It was me. amazing. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, it is going to be over at where the Society Obscura is, was. I'm thinking was. Um, give me a second. Well, is it is? Because this is before, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Or a different universe. Never no, that's mind. That's true. That's true different universe so yeah it's like it is where it is society obscura wow that is all oh, fucking amazing okay so what roles are you intended to perform in the play resolve the threat by playing out this role during the play's next performance ending in the tragic fall of the occluded king or by breaking out of this role and ruining the production itself thereby returning order to london now, now that you've just, well, going back ahead first, it's like discovering the location of the new venue, 
then you would you would need to watch a performance during any following night phase while this threat is active okay and then you would answer this question so you need to see it first before you can start yeah. answering the question for for this uh I feel like i know what we're doing with the night phase <laughs> oh boy i have different plans unfortunately oh my oh. god uh, okay mm, mm, mm. okay um sorry brain is very excited and it's like now i'm like i'm trying to remember what what i need to do um okay so given that since we've answered two questions oh my god tell me what is everybody all doing for for night phase what is Ernest? what is Ernest doing i mean i don't want to rehearse my blocking so i guess i would go see a performance on how the King of Shadows would put on a production. Okay, so you're heading to the Society Obscura to watch the show. Yeah. To watch King and Shadows. <laughs> All right. Liat, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, I think that since we now know that Elodie and, and uh, the wife are in cahoots in some degree, um, I think she's going to invite the wife to to play oh and uh she'll ask her to bring any of her friends if she'd like you know she they're never gonna have another opportunity like this in their lifetime so okay not to see the play but to actually just be in the presence of liat you know mm -hmm. sure and friends okay dr weiss what are you doing for night phase well, I'm in a bit of a pickle, honestly mm -hmm. speaking, because sure. I have a uh, Dame Georgie on my tail, but I should be on the tail of another uh, killer. Which, well, maybe not killer is the right word, but enough of another animal. Patrick Fig is still on the loose. We need to get that, that boy. I might have a stinger scene that might change your mind. I'm just saying, we'll see. I don't know yet. Okay, and then Soraticus, he's got, I'm gonna put this in parentheses. He's got a duel to deal with in the morning. <laughs> oh my god! I'm so excited. You have no idea. Mm -hmm. Um. Hmm. <laughs> god, I'm stuck in musical mode, so I immediately went to my fair lady. If I've got to duel in the morning. <laughs> oh yeah. Well. <laughs> Oh, maybe that's the maybe that's the post credit scene. It's like we've got Ernest singing it and then Sir Atticus coming up from behind and joining you. Oh, man. <laughs> OK, sorry. Um, hmm. While I'm stewing a lot of things in my brain with a lot of vegetables and meat in my brain, let's do some stars and wishes. OK. Um, Stars are things that you liked about today's session and wishes are what you'd like to see for next time. That's about as simple as we can get it. Um, I'm going to say, Jesus H. Stars for just, oh my God. The masks, of course, always, like never disappointed and, and, and always like, yeah, mouth dropping open. Beautiful. Um, so enjoyed all those. And then, yeah, I mean, even for like the shortened phase that we had today, I mean, I think everybody got like, you know, got a lot of great information and a lot of interesting things happening to them. Um, I'm sorry to put uh, Ernest through such a tizzy, um, but like star for you, Sarah, for like, <laughs> you know, like letting Ernest run with it. Uh, that was beautiful. And then Liat just oh, always so goddamn composed and, and poised when it comes to dealing with bullshit. And uh, there was a lot of bullshit this episode. So, yeah. Awesome. Um, way to hmm, tag D.I. Pettigrew on not getting details right and then making him pay for it. Very, very enjoyable. Um, and Dr. Weiss? Yeah, I mean, goodness. I love your face of reason, even when weird shit's happening. I mean, you're just a happy guy who's just like, yeah, it's fine. It's it's all good. I, you know, nothing strange is going on. It's all great. I love that. 
I can't wait to see like when we get to see behind the scenes when the doctor is breaking down. Oh yeah, he just needs more conditions. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm trying. Sometimes I forget. I'm sorry. You just got to keep keep hounding me. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. You can just give them out for free when we do no. terrible shit. Oh. Don't have to make us roll. Just give us conditions. Oh, true. True. <laughs> Well, anyway, I, I, I will I will definitely make that a, a, a wish for myself for next time. It's like, you know, just get better at uh, handing out the conditions like like bad candy. <laughs> um, yeah, so wishes to get a lot done for night phase and see how mucked up this gets. I wouldn't be surprised if all next session is just about night phase because there's just mm -hmm. so much shit to get done, oh, to be yeah. honest. Um, yeah, so that's me. Anybody <laughs> It's got anything else. I am super excited to have a showdown with Dame Georgie of some kind. Um I I really I'm really glad I left Ernest by himself because like he he was just having a time to and a half of like I mean I love being in the spotlight, but god damn the spotlight hurts it was just like it, and it was just marvelous and liat you managed to get out of spending two of like your of your uh uh which uh, uh marks on your uh masterwork by spending one mark in a very particular way and i was very impressed with that so because oh man i i love how Pedigree being taken down by a peg or two. It's always fun. Uh, oh, but you were so mean. And I, I was just like, I was having it. And in Mads, oh boy. I just love the clues of like, I really enjoyed the sort of theorizing we did this session because we were like, yeah, the collector's doing this and this and that, and it's actually two people, and then that, that was for, very smart. And everybody's like, everybody else was like, very confused of like, we only have two clues for the King and Jaws, what, like, what's going on? And I'm just like, i played this game a lot, I know exactly where this is going. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to our good, our good, good pal, and our good hunter, our legacy, Sir Atticus, returning to us and seeing what we got done because we were very productive. We're not, we're not totally in danger. Yeah. <laughs> not totally. Absolutely. It's fine. It's all good. Yeah. Uh, good to be back. Good to be starting trouble. Uh, and uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Stars. Um, this is kind of a, a star for both Mads and uh, and chaotic, but I really liked the uh, the uh, Georgie cameo uh, as a reaction. That was really cool, um, and I'm really excited to see how that continues to play out. Um, like I have a sort of curiosity because I would like to see the two of them interact. <laughs> um, I don't know how that would play out, but I, I think it'd be fun. Um, because like a metal level, obviously, but like on a narrative level, like he, they, they know each other. Like, so I think that, you know, Dr. Weiss would probably have a lot of questions for Georgie as to why he's not been where he said he was going to be. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really curious to see how that's going to play out. Um, I love Ernest, uh, Ernest going mad. Um, I love this, uh, I love the, the musical interlude. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm just really excited to, cause he's, he's been hanging on by a thread this entire time. So, um, you know, I think that he's, uh, I, I, and this is sort of a wish. I, I, I really hope to see him go off the rails now. Um, I, I hope the, I hope the collar has been broken. I hope the leash is off and I want to see chaos. Um, and then, yeah, Mads, uh, thank you for for putting up with everything. And uh, um, I like that this was uh, a nice kind of like chill day phase, but um, 
like not not chill it was productive is a better word for it <laughs> um because it was not chill for uh, a lot of people <laughs> um but yeah uh wish is just to next time see curious to see how this uh, duel between atticus and uh what this face goes i don't even remember who he's dueling with but uh i'm excited for it another dr uh warner no uh Rod, is his dr rodney walters he walters he's very clean and he has a a smoking pipe that's uh of a flying dutchman uh motif got it got it um yeah i'm excited for that and uh excited for the play also star to the chaotic for the theory on the uh the venue because um I, I love uh that thread as a whole and the cast of characters and it is great so uh i'm excited for matt's to bring them out i will wholeheartedly second that star um for sure i also uh start a chaotic for just the way you are choosing to play this academic caught in his own logical loop to his own detriment in which he is rationalizing his own scientific rationalizations over and over again so far gone from the scientific theories and methods that maybe he learned you also are are creeping towards um that kind of chaos moment and i'm really enjoying the way you're just letting it leak in it's so uh aromatic i can smell the crazy coming off this doctor and i love it um i also uh love the di Pettigrew stuff but also just describing a dormond as cooking like he's baking he's not quite done yet like that whole analogy i just found so utterly charming it's like, oh, no, he needs two more minutes. So Dorman needs to be a golden brown when he comes back. You know, it just, yeah. it, it he was, was he was also, I think he's maybe like proofing, you know, yeah, proofing. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. He's, he's yeah. Gonna... And he's in a rich dough. You got to prove and then work exactly, and then prove again. Exactly. <laughs> he's got to, he's got to, he's got to rise a bit mm -hmm. and then be pounded down and rise a bit and be pounded down and all this kind of stuff. Oh, my gosh. Love um. It. I really enjoyed the theorizing as well. Um, I think that all of the threats coming to the theater together is going to be just so effing fun all around. I mean, I won't be surprised if the duel happens on stage, right? Like we just like fold it in on itself. Um, I'm So I'm excited to see that play out. Um, I really enjoyed a lot of the um, vis visualization of Liat's um, masks, and I'm really excited to see more of the child and understand a lot more of that relationship. Um, and then Mads, as always, I actually, I enjoyed you playing the wife quite a bit because I felt the bristles and the prickles that she was already trying to assert in the situation. And that was just really pitch perfect. And I love the way you play our NPCs and big heart to you, of course. Um, uh, yeah, I'm just excited to see it all play out. I'll uh, sing on cue for my supper as the duel starts uh, next session, I guess. <laughs> The musical interlude was fun and completely unexpected, as I know Ernest has kind of been playing on the shadows of his own sanity, going to Bedlam during a theater threat. He was, I don't care that he rolled a 12, he wasn't going to be sane walking out of that building. So I didn't necessarily play to the dice, but I played to the character and it felt really great doing it. So that was a fun little Buffy homage in my brain. <laughs> I mean, it was just like bringing back all sorts of like different different uh, episodes or movies like that just have that musical part to it. That's just like uh, they're in their own little world right now, and it's colored purple and polka dot. <laughs> so I love it. Oh my gosh, that was so great. Speaking of a different world, I think we close where as dusk settles in. 
and tendrils of darkness feed into the sky and the reds and the oranges recede into twilight. Strangely enough, the tendrils would be familiar to anyone that has entered into this place called Reverie that the Queen of Hearts is holding dominion over. But there's also the reminiscent tendrils of something quite recent, but yet long ago when the hunters of Hargrave House were dealing with some sort of enchanted or occult tree way back when in a warehouse somewhere in London. And it is here among the remnants, the shadows of this place that a lone young man dressed in rags, looking filthy, but yet furtive, will reach the roof, alternately climbing and walking, and he will stare out from underneath his tousled hair looking into the shadows where the tree used to be and then out of the shadows comes a woman dressed in a gown of red and black and she says your parents have been so worried about you they are contained right now. Your father is exultant. Your mother is repentant. And unfortunately, I was unable to save your brother. But how are you, young man? Would you like to join your parents? Or would you like to visit my land? Be the creature you always were meant to be. And a red light, possibly a glow from her, shines on his face as it changes from wonder into this smile and the camera cuts from looking straight at his face with the red glow upon it to his back looking from behind as the Queen of Hearts stands there placid in her smile and watching this hunched, emaciated figure grow in stature and change shape a little and immediately cut to black. And that is where we end our session for tonight and look forward to the shenanigans for next time. So you guys have a wonderful week. Happy gaming if I don't see you for anything else before then and can't wait for next Friday. That's... See you guys. Oh my god. <laughs> Bye!